Hey everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So we've got some blood meal in a dish down there inside the furnace. And I'm going to incinerate it to remove all the carbon and other volatiles. I've also got a little glass boat in there I'm annealing. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to see if I can actually extract iron from the blood. This is just kind of an experiment to see if it's possible. Alright, we're over a thousand degrees. <laughs> That's still freezing cold. Some good fire brick. Okay. Protect my hand a little bit. This might burst into flames. Ooh. Oh, that smells horrible. <laughs> it's like burned hair. fire and actually burn away some of that smoke. Yeah, I've blackened everything in there. Oh, look at that glass. Doesn't that look cool? Awesome. It's like blackened glass. Oh, can you guys even see that? Yeah, alright. So it's kind of puffed up like styrofoam, hasn't it? I might even want to let it cool so I can get that out of there and then just crank up the heat to burn off all this carbon. Alright, so I'm just letting it cool off so I can take that little boat out of there. I don't want to... <sighs> Apparently I'm cooling it off too quickly. Alright, so... Let it go quite a bit longer, maybe even too long. Looks like it's all burned up. So, turn this off. I guess right, so we'll just let it cool. Alright, it's thoroughly cooled off. You can see our little bit of blood ash. That cooked down a lot. Look at that. Basically nothing left. And what's here is like light and fluffy. I like how it's a kind of a rusty red color. Let's see, do I have a magnet? Of course I have a magnet. <laughs> it sticks. Oh, that's great. Oh, this is going to be easier than I thought. So I can just use the magnet to pull the iron out of the ash. <laughs> Alright. I still might need to like wash out the other contaminants. This is essentially rust now. I guess I could purify it by dissolving it in acid. I might do that. So for this I am transferring the iron over into a test tube. And I'm going to add some, yeah, probably just hydrochloric acid. Alright, a little bit of hydrochloric acid to dissolve everything. Everything that will dissolve. You can see the solution is a little bit yellow-orange from the iron. Let that dissolve for a while. Alright, so as you can see I've re-dissolved some or most of the iron. Let me just siphon some off here. Down in a test tube. Alright. Now to neutralize the acid with some lye solution. This should form uh, iron hydroxide, which is poorly soluble. Leaving all of your sodium and potassium and stuff uh, in the solution. 
All right, you can see that a little bit better. Sorry, the background's gonna be all washed out. There we go. Now I need an oxidizer, which I will use uh, hydrogen peroxide. And also, uh, since this is a dilute peroxide, it'll also be a strong dilutant for the solution. It's the iron hydroxide will be oxidized to iron oxide. Any uh, calcium hydroxide that might have been present will now dissolve into the solution. And we should get the iron oxide eventually settling out. Something of note, calcium ions in solution will cause uh, peroxide to break down. As you can see it's being catalytically destroyed. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything except that uh, the excess peroxide is going to spend some time bubbling. Which of course keeps it from settling out. Okay, looks like it's just finally done reacting. As you can see the iron oxide is able to settle out now. Uh, definitely next time for the larger batches I'm going to use sulfuric acid so that the calcium stays behind. There's our uh, purified iron oxide. This should be magnetic. Yep. Could use a magnet to pull it out, I think. Okay, there's our iron settling out. Here's a powerful magnet. Does that do anything? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not able to move it around very well. It is still mostly water. Well, anyway, uh, from here I can filter the iron out. Uh, maybe wash it with uh, clean water a few times to get rid of residual calcium and other ions. And then I guess I could uh, either reduce it with carbon or do like a little thermite reaction. The thermite might be the more spectacular option to go through. Should we do that for this video? You know what? Maybe. Now let's turn it down temporarily. Okay, so here is the iron oxide, which I've pulled out of the test tube and dried. And here is some very fine aluminum powder. We mix these together approximately by equal volumes. Okay. Get that all diapered together. And then we should have a little bit of blood thermite. It might not be enough to be really all that viable, but it should make a little bit of a spark. Put it out on this block of plaster here. Okay, I'm going to zoom pretty close in I'm going to boost that so I can actually see there we go and over that now we should actually be able to see the reaction oh, my lasers all spread out let's focus that Okay, well, that worked. It's like I had the mixture a little bit uh, aluminum rich. I didn't see any separation there.
Come on. There we go. <laughs> well, now we have a little bit of magnetic metallic iron which is uh, probably intermixed with a bunch of aluminum oxide. But if I do this on a larger scale, we should be pretty okay for making a bead of metal. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you on the final version.